What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over a couple of quick and easy things that you can do to unlock that popping sound that we all look for when we're hitting ground strokes. Most people make the mistake of thinking it's all about how fast you swing or what your contact looks like. And those things are kind of important, but there are little details that go into really unlocking that consistent pop sound off your racket. And we all know what it sounds like if you've ever watched a professional match or you've ever seen like really good players next to you. You always compare why your swing doesn't quite sound the way that theirs does. And I'm going to show you guys what you can do to get that sound consistently in this video. So let's get started. And before we get started, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can continue to do videos just like this one. But let's get back into the topic. So when you go to hit a normal forehand or backhand, there are three key points that are gonna unlock that sound that you're looking for. First one is going to be acceleration. Now, acceleration is different than speed. Acceleration is the climbing up of your speed. So accelerating is not swinging at 60 miles an hour, it's swinging up to 60 miles an hour. Most people, when they get to a certain level, they understand how to keep the racket moving faster throughout the contact and then let the racket decelerate after. Most recreational players, they swing at their top speed through the shot. So if you're, as I said, using 60 miles per hour as an example, their whole swing looks like it's 60 miles an hour. And it might be really clean, but you're not really accelerating through the shot. Even if my swing is slower or even in terms of the top speed, my racket's actually building speed through the shot. That's gonna be the first thing that really unlocks that shape on the ball, that speed through the contact, and also, again, that sound that you're looking for. The second thing that you're gonna to wanna to be able to do in order to unlock that sound is transfer your weight through as consistently as possible. Whenever we hit a shot, if we're leaning backwards or jumping up or you're not moving at all, that's a lost amount of force that could be transferred through the shot. So for example, me swinging again, 60 miles an hour with my acceleration, but staying right here planted in this position, I'm losing that force that I could transfer through the ground. And as a result, I'm leaving force on the table unaccounted for. Whereas if I take that swing and just fire through it and I bring my leg and everything, that's multiplying the speed of the overall swing. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate those two things by themselves before I add in the third one. So starting with a swing that's one speed, which has minimal acceleration, your shot would sound something like that. And then as I go to add in accelerating through the shot, you can hear the difference in the sound already. And I'm not really unloading my body yet. If I add in the unloading of the body, you can hear how that sound changed again. Now, adding in the third thing, this is the one where people kind of get themselves in trouble. You want to make sure you have a more linear acceleration. That means your force is going through the ball more than it's going up basically saying like you want to hit a flatter shot or a more driven rally shot. If I take my acceleration and turn it into a heavy ball, for example, like this, even if I do everything correct, the sound is going to be different and a little quieter. Hopefully you don't miss hit it, but all that stuff is still there. I'm accelerating through the contact, but I'm not transferring that weight through my shot. I'm transferring my weight around the shot instead. So the last thing that I said is gonna be hitting through your contact with a more linear swing path. That means you could either, again, hit flat, or you can take a longer extended rally shot. And if you put all three of those things together, you will get that sound. The one thing that you wanna make sure you do though is maintain a synchronized timing. You don't wanna send your arm out there by itself and then unload the body Likewise, you don't want to completely unload the body and then bring the arm through. You want to combine the first two things, which is why I laid them out first, which is transfer the weight and accelerate, and then make sure those two things line up with the direct swing path that you're going for. Once you get those two things in place and then combine it with this, you're going to end up with that sound, not on that ball though, you're going to end up with that sound of really popping through the shot 
And then if you want to make it, which I should, then you start doing that. Accelerating up and through, and then really ripping into the ball and maintaining that sound as well. So why do we need pop in the first place? For some people, it's just a comparative measure. They want their shot to sound as good or impressive as the person next to them. But there is some benefits to it as well. For one, obviously, if you're hitting a shot that sounds like that, there would have to be some physics behind it. It means your ball will move faster. It will bounce through the court quicker. It will pick up some speed off of your racket. And also, you just feel more confident on the court when you're really committing to those swings and you know what the shot's going to sound like and feel like. So if you know anybody that would benefit from this quick video that we did, please send it off to them. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but don't forget, work on this separate. Get yourself to do each skill individually and then synchronize them and put them together. Don't go out and just hit flat and wait for that sound. You wanna make sure everything's working on its own and then put them all together. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.